गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन कैन यू हेयर मी गुड आफ्टरनून सर गुड गुड आफ्टरनून सर गुड आफ्टरनून सर वेरी प्लेजन गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल ऑफ यू डू यू हेयर मी क्लियरली सो प्रीवियस डे वी हैड बिगन द चैप्टर द नेकलेस वी हैड गोन थ्रू द इंट्रोडक्शन इंट्रोडक्शन टू द चैप्टर द कैरेक्टर समरी एंड ऑल दोज थिंग्स यस and i hope now all of you have read this chapter you have understood the story and read about the characters but we read it now word to word line by line so as we begin what is today's word what is the word i had sent on the group anyone raise your hand any one of you remember the word today's word is that means none of you remember none of you had seen the group you haven't gone through the word and the meaning so you had not sent on the group i had sent yes so you have not sent is it let me check yes sir okay let me check yes sir aaj nahi aaya don't speak hindi this is english class and you must speak english yes so i had sent it on 12th group only not sent i did not send it on 10th group okay good afternoon sir yes good afternoon i sent it just now now you might have got yes did you get it right now yes sir okay and even if you didn't get you can see you can check it on the board are you able to read this word can you read this word it's not clear sir auto send yes auto yes i i read the spelling a u t o s c h e d i a s m yes i repeat it again auto skedism yes auto ski diasm i repeat auto ski diasm and the meaning of auto ski diasm is something something that improves yes yeah, something have been improved improvised version of something better version of something so the meaning of the word is improvised auto ski diasm okay the chapter which we continue today is the nicolas written by a french author french novelist french writer guy de maupassant this is the name of the writer guy de maupassant some of the keywords which you shall see in the chapter so i have written and it is written in the book also m m e use for madam okay madam <clears throat> incessantly means continuously elated means excited grieve or grieved sad this may also sadness or sorrowful now what the other words come we shall discuss that but a quick recap of the chapter so in this chapter we are going to read about a main character that is madam loisel now madam loisel she was very ambitious woman she was desiring from her very beginning to get married to a rich man to a rich family but since she belonged to a poor clerk family she was born in a clerk family lower family and therefore she and her father could not arrange the uh, dowry or the gifts required so those days there was also dowry system was also there she could not arrange it and therefore she got married to a, a person who was in a job of clerk who was in clerical job okay 
it was a low rank job not a very prestigious not a very but it was a government job there and she got married but in her heart and in her mind she had always ambition to behave to go to live a life in the company of the uh, luxurious people rich people to live in the society of rich people but she was helpless she couldn't do it because neither her husband was earning so much amount of money so that she could go and mingle with the rich elite class sophisticated class of the society nor does she have any amount of money or property given in dowry by her father so one day her husband came and he was very elated, elated very happy very excited and presented her with a card and when uh, she uncovered when she saw the card uh, she she didn't show any any uh, happiness any reaction she did not react well so the husband said it's a card we have been invited for a for a party for a ball by the minister and everybody doesn't get this privilege we are privileged but she was not excited she was sad she was dull and the husband asked her after three days why what's the matter why you are still not okay i have gave you a happy news you always wanted to enjoy the party or the company of the rich people now i am taking you for a selective party but why are you not so she said that i do not have a proper dress for the party and then he said okay okay husband was very loving husband kind and therefore he said okay how much it would cost you and she calculated and said some around 300 to 400 francs he had saved this money for buying a gun because he had hobby of uh, uh, hunting shooting and he had saved the money for purchasing a gun but he sacrificed it for purchasing a dress for his wife but then seeing the dress also she was not happy he asked what's the matter now so she said i do not have any any jewelry which is suitable which is matching to my dress and she was again frustrated angry and the husband said you you can borrow it from your friend so she had a friend and the name of friend was madam forester and madam forester was rich friend a rich lady oh, uh, she was friend of matilda so uh, but one thing is that matilda did not like going to her again and again and asking uh, because she belonged to a rich society she lived in a elite class whereas matilda got married to a clerk so therefore somewhere in her heart in her mind it was a kind of uh, uh, embarrassment for him she felt it shy that we studied in the same school both of them had studied in the same convent school but her friend got married to a rich man she lived in the rich society rich family so however at the request of husband she went and borrowed the necklace and they went for the party they enjoyed the party around four o'clock in the morning four o'clock four thirty they reached their home back and when she checked again when she had a final look in the mirror she saw that necklace was missing and when the necklace was missing she was uh, frightened she was uh, disappointed because she had borrowed it from her friend and she would have to return it according to her it was very costly a diamond necklace but actually it was only a replica it was a duplicate it was imitated work so she told the husband both of them searched here and there but they couldn't find it and when they couldn't find it they thought of purchasing the same necklace they purchased it but without putting the matter into a knowledge of her friend forester and they spent a huge amount of money on it they borrowed money from here and there they took loan also and their 10 years their precious years were spent in uh, repaying the loan amount and uh, um, um, matilda who lived in a clerical family uh, uh, her condition became worse and she became worse than what she was before and one day when she met matilda uh, simply Matilda asked her, uh, sorry, not Matilda, Forrester, Madam Forrester asked her, hey, Matilda, how are you? How is this situation, condition, how you have changed? So Matilda explained to her everything that I had borrowed the necklace for the party and since then it has happened. 
and then the mystery of the necklace came out and her friend said that that was a replica that was a duplicate one that that didn't even worth to me 300 francs and uh, what a foolishness act you have done so this way when they but there was no point discussing it about because already they had spent uh, their huge amount of money and time on it so that is the story so it tells us that we should not have that attitude of showing off we should be happy with what we have now we read the chapter those who are interested in reading raise your hand those who want to read from the book raise your hand so dev jain is first hand tarvi gupta second hand okay dev jain <coughs> read it clearly and louder for everybody yes begin start yes sir she, the necklace she was one of those pretty young ladies born <coughs> as if through an error of destiny into a family of clerks she had no dowry no hopes no means and of becoming known loved and married by an either rich or distinguished and she allowed herself to marry a petty clerk in the office of boards of education petty she was a clerk, simple a but she, yes petty petty means a, a person who is small in rank low in rank so she was ambitious to get married to a rich family to a rich person but since she did not have dowry she got married to a petty clerk that is small in rank p e double t y so you can also say ordinary simple poor low in position or rank continue she she suffered in cell uh, incessantly feeling incessantly herself means born. continuously already i told you incessantly means continuously all the time yes sir feeling herself born for all de uh, delicious and luxurious delicacies she suffered read properly delicacies, yes, delicacies sir. and luxuries she suffered from the poverty of her apartment the shabby walls and the worn chairs all these things tortured and angered her so she did not like even her apartment her house the walls of the house the furniture was worn out so it showed her uh, uh, pathetic situation her poverty continue read properly clearly yes when she seated herself for dinner opposite her husband who uncovered the during with a delhi um, delhi delighted air saying oh the pop uh, pot pie i know nothing better than that she would think of elegant dinners of shining silver she thought of exquisite food served in marvelous dishes she had neither frocks nor jewels nothing Okay, and she wait, loved wait, only wait. those things. Same. Stop where, wherever there is full stop. How you are reading? Read properly. There are a full stop also. You are not taking a proper pause whenever there is full stop. So, Turin means a bowl. Okay. So, when the husband returned home, he uncovered the uh, lid from the bowl and the flavor of that vegetable. The dish was very tasty. It was a pot pie. Pot pie is a dish of meat. It was a pot pie, a meat, a non-veg dish it was. And it was elegant dinner for the husband. And the wife said, I couldn't think of anything else better than this. And she imagined, she thought always of taking dinner, lunch, breakfast in silver bowls, golden bowl. That means it was her ambition. She was very ambitious to live a luxurious life. She thought of the exquisite food. Excuse, exquisite means fine. Okay. Fine food served in marvelous dishes. She had neither frocks nor jewels. Nothing. And she loved only those things. So what did she love? She loved, she was fond of frocks. Frocks here stand for beautiful 
clothes or a kind of gown and also jewelry so obviously all the ladies all the ladies all the women they are fond of shopping they are shopaholic as the man some men some people are workaholic the women are shopaholic they are happy very happy when you take them for shopping and buying new dress new clothes new bracelets new jewelry all those things yes continue dev jain continue <clears throat> she had she had a rich friend a schoolmate at the convent who she did not convent. like to visit at she the convent on convent she she suffered so much when she returned she wept for whole days for despair and disappointment one okay, evening just, her husband it, returned that's it. that's it so she suffered whole day from despair and disappointment despair means the sadness and disappointment stress yes charvi continue what happened say yes sir why why there are dashes in between why there are dashes who she did not like to visit to in order to continue the sentence so these are the punctuation when we read about the punctuation we shall discuss so dashes semicolon colon whenever the sentence are continued or it is not stopped instead of full stop when the words the speaker something is said about the speaker that is continued so the author or the writer they can use different punctuation so semicolon also is there sometime colon also is used and dash also is used so the purpose is that the sentence is continuing it is not stopped okay sir yes uh yes when evening her husband Return elated. So one evening her yeah. husband returned he said, elated. He said, "Here is something means, for you." Elated means excited. Very happy. Happy, very happy. Continue. Continue. Here he said, "Here is something for you." She quickly drew out a printed card on which were inscribed these words: Inscri "The Minister Inscri of Return. Public Instruction." Yes, inscribed. I N S C R I W B E. Inscribed means return. The words return. Some words they are cut. They are cowed words written on the card. And this is the example of uh, invitation. You will have invitation in your eleventh uh, and twelfth class. <clears throat> so this is the format of invitation. when you invite somebody for the party this way the invitation card is written so your internet connection is unstable why can you hear my voice all of you clearly yes sir yes sir sir in the middle yes. it was hanging okay so it yes, it showed it showed that uh, internet connection was poor so this is the example of invitation the minister of public instruction and madam george rapanian asked the honor of m and madam loisel's company monday evening january 18 at the minister so this is a very short format there are different format of invitations also yes continue reading yes sir instead of being delighted as the husband had hope she threw the invitation spitefully <coughs> on the table murmuring what do you suppose i want with okay, that okay spitefully means but my dearie i thought it just, would just make you wait, happy wait you... wait 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 spitefully means hurtfully she did not like it with contempt so she threw it spitefully did not like and murmur what is the meaning of the word murmur spoken something softly yes or no softly yes, yes sir speaking yes sir something softly into his or her own mouth that is murmuring but my deary i thought it would make you happy so the husband is saying my deary instead of dear instead of loving he is using the word informal informal language deary yes continue but my dearie i thought it would make you happy 
you will never go out and get a location and a fine one. <coughs> Everyone wishes, everybody wishes <coughs> one, and it is very select. Not many are given to employees. You will see the whole official world there. So everybody. She looked at him with an irritated eye. Only the selective eye. people are chosen for this. She looked at him with an irritated eye and declared impatiently, "What do you suppose I ought to wear to such a thing as that?" So the lady was angry. Wife was angry, and she said, "What do you think? What should I wear for the party? You are telling me for the party, for the party, but I have no proper dress. I have no jewelry." Yes, continue. He had not thought of that. He stammered, "Why?" The dress you wear when we go to the theater—it seems very pretty to me. He was silent, stupefied in dismay at the sight of his wife weeping. He stammered, "What is the matter? What is the matter?" So he talked about the dress. He said, "The dress you wear for the uh, theater when we go to watch movie in the theater—that dress is fantastic." That's beautiful. That's appropriate. You can wear that dress, but husbands do not know the wife. Husband do not understand that wives are shopaholic. So it was same with Mr. Loisel also. He because the men wear anything, they do not much pay attention about their uh, outer experience for them. It is a kind of yes, everything is okay. But women are ladies are very much particular about what to wear, what not to wear, what to eat, what not to eat. Especially they would have if there are ten parties, ten parties in the whole year, they would have around ten years. Then they don't want to repeat even the dress and the jewelry should match with the with the dress. And even the sandals, and even the uh, 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 bracelet, necklace. Everything should match. So that is about the women, and it happens with Mrs. Loisel also. Yes, continue. Yes. Sir. Okay, just wait. Anybody else want to read? Just wait, Charvi. Yes. Who else wants to read? Raise your hand. Sagar Porwal and Naira Kureshi. Okay. Yes. First, Sagar, read. Then we'll. Ask Naira. Yes, Sagar. Continue. By a violent effort, she had controlled her vex vexation and responded in a calm voice, wiping her moist cheeks. Nothing. Only I have no dress, and consequently, I cannot go to this affair. So, Give your card to yes. some colleague. So, wife, she wife. controlled her anger. Vexation means. anger she had controlled her anger and she told him to give the card to one of his colleagues and one of his colleagues could go and attend the party continue he was he was grieved but answered let us see matilda how much would a suitable custom cost something that would serve for other occasions something very simple so how She much a costume for... costume would cost costume here stand for clothes so it would be appropriate for other occasion also something very simple how much it would cost so the husband is asking the price yes continue she reflected for some seconds thinking of a sum that she could ask for without bringing with it an immediate refusal a frightened exclamation from the economical clerk finally she said in a hesit hesitating voice i cannot tell exactly but it seems to be to me that 400 francs out to over it. cover it so she said 400 francs would be appropriate <clears throat> to purchase the dress so she had calculated because if she had asked for more she was afraid that husband might deny 
she could not afford it. So she had calculated it and she told the sum. Continue. He turned a little pale, for he had saved just this sum to buy a gun that he might be able to join some hunting parties the next summer with some friends who went to shoot larks on Sunday. Nevertheless, he answered, Very well, I will give you 400 francs, but try to have a pretty dress. So the husband had saved that much amount for purchasing a gun because he had hobby of hunting and he had planned to go for a hunting in the summer with some of his friends. But he said, okay, all right, I can sacrifice this money for the love of my wife. And he said, but you purchase a wonderful, beautiful, suitable dress with that pretty dress with that money. Okay, now let us recap some of the question. What fresh problems now disturb Madam Loisel? How is the problem solved? So this question would come afterward, but before this, the questions were given. What kind of person is Madame Loisel? Why is she always <clears throat> unhappy? Who will, who will answer this question? What kind of person is Madame Loisel? Yes, so first hand, Charvi. Yes, what kind of person is she? Answer? Madame Loisel is a very ambitious person. And she wants to look very pretty. She wants, she dreams of uh, living in a very rich family and uh, dining a marvelous dish. And but she's always unhappy because she could not achieve that her dreams. Uh, she was ready to a uh, pretty girl and not uh, for the. She was very ambitious. She was not happy with what she had. She was not happy with the furniture, with the wall, with the apartment, with the dress, with the, with the marriage and nothing. Nothing could satisfy her. Okay. All right. What kind of person is her husband? Answer another person. Any one of you? What kind of person is her husband? Mr. Loisel. Any one of you other than Charvi? Only one hand. What? Others are doing. No hands are raised by others. Yes, Arushi. Arushi, tell me what kind of a person is her husband? Sir, his husband was a loving and caring person as he always sacrifices his money for he took for gun and uh, gave it to buy a dress to her wife. Very well. And he was satisfied <coughs> with what he He had. was contented with what he It was had. a very simple. Yes. Okay. All right. Now let us go. Let us continue what we left earlier. Naira Qureshi. Naira, read. Yes, sir. The day of the ball approached and Madame Loisel seemed sad, disturbed and noxious. Nevertheless, her dress was nearly ready. Her husband said to her one evening, what is the, ma what is the matter with you? You have acted strangely for two or three days. Okay. And she responded. So the ball here stand for what? The ball? What the party, the yes. grand party. The ball, the ball here stand for the party. The ball. So the day of the ball approach and she seemed sad. And husband asked, what's the matter? Why are you sad? Continue. Continue, Naira. Yes, sir. And she responded, I am vexed not to have a jewel, nothing to adorn myself with. I shall have such a poverty strike and look. I would prefer not to go to this party. He replied, you can wear some natural flowers. In this season, they look very chic. Okay. She was not convinced. Just so vexed. Vexed means angry. So I am vexed. Vexed means angry. 
not to have a jewel nothing to adorn myself with adorn means decorate i cannot adorn myself i cannot decorate myself with any jewelry so the husband said that you can go for a natural jewelry that is a flower and in this season it is plenty of there you can decorate yourself he replied you can wear some natural flowers in this season they look very chic chic means elegant beautiful stylish continue <clears throat> was convinced no she replied there is nothing more humiliating than to have a shabby air in the midst of rich women she then her husband cried out how stupid we are go and find your friend with madam forester and ask her to lend you her jewels she uttered a cry of joy it's it is true she said i had not thought of that the next day she took herself to her friend's house and related her story of distress madam frost uh, Fro forester went to her closet took out a large jewel case bought it opened it and said choose my dear she saw at first some bracelets then a collar of pearls then a veni venetian cross of gold and jewels of admirable workmanship workmanship she cried the jewels before the glass hesitated but could neither decide to take them nor leave them then she asked have you nothing more okay Why? so yes. at the advice of her husband she went to madam forester and it shows that madam forester was very helpful lady she did not uh, uh, deny helping her friend she brought the complete uh, jewelry box and kept it in front of uh, matilda and she said you choose it yourself so first matilda saw some of the articles and uh, she had seen a collar of pearls that's a necklace bracelets then a venetian cross of gold so venetian cross of gold so there in foreign people some people also wear this cross decorative cross of jesus christ okay for for uh, the party etc it's a fashion there it is only a, it is not only a religious symbol of course it is a religious symbol plus it is for them a, a sign of a decoration also and venetian cross particularly made in such a way that it is of pure gold and it it cannot be copied so one venetian cross will have one design second will have second design third will have third design so she checked all those thing and then she asked for uh, asked from her for some more things and uh, madam Lo, uh, madam forester gave her the complete box and asked her to choose herself continue naira yes sir why yes look for yourself i do not know what will please you suddenly she discovered in a black satin box a superb necklace of diamonds her hands trembled as she took it out she placed it about her throat against her dress and was ecstatic then she asked in a hesitating voice full of anxiety could you lend me this only this why yes certainly she fell upon the neck of her friend embraced with embraced her with passion then went away with her treasure so the day she, of the ball yes she chose only one necklace and uh, madam forester she said only one only you want this she said yes it's all right for him and out of her her compassion she embraced her friend and went away with her treasure she was very happy because she had got the necklace diamond necklace of her choice but actually it was a replica it was a duplicate one it was not original not real one but she thought that it is a real diamond jewel continue the day of the ball arrived madam noisel was a great success 
She was the prettiest of all, elegant, gracious, smiling and full of joy. All the men noticed her, asked her name and wanted to be presented. She danced with enthusiasm, intoxicated with pleasure, thinking of nothing but all this admir admiration, this victory so complete and sweet of her heart. Okay, so she, she enjoyed the party. She danced very well in the party. She was noticed by everybody, the people, the gents, the gentlemen, the ladies, those who were there. She was very beautiful, gracious, smiling, full of joy, and everybody wanted to talk to her. She was intoxicated with pleasure, with happiness. She had forgotten for that time that she was a poor lady. She was born in a clerk family and she was nothing. She was thinking of nothing but all this admiration. Everybody was appreciating her. She was very happy. Yes, anybody else would like to read? We can change the reader. Yes, who else is going to read? Raise your hand, those who are interested in reading. Okay, so it is again, Charvi, no one else. Okay, go ahead, Charvi, continue. Yes, sir. She went home towards four o'clock in the morning. Her husband had been half asleep in one of the, uh, one of the little salons since uh, midnight with three other gentlemen whose wives were enjoying themselves very much. He threw around her shoulders the modest wraps they had carried whose poverty clashed with the elegance of the ball costume. She wished to hurry away in order not to be noticed by other women who were wrapping themselves in rich furs. So around four o'clock in the morning, they enjoyed the party. The husband was tired and he was sitting in a salon. Salon is a hall for the guest, a reception area, you could say for the guest. It is also used for hair styling, hair cutting, but here it stands for the parlor, which is there in the hotels or the place where the parties are arranged. So husband was sitting there, he was tired and the lady, her, his wife was enjoying. And then uh, it was time to go. They went and uh, there was a modest wrap. So modest means a simple ordinary wrap. She had covered herself. It was a little bit uh, cold also. And she didn't want to be noticed by other people, other uh, uh, those who were enjoying the party that she is wearing an ordinary wrap because the other women, they had covered themselves with the wrap of rich furs, costly wrap. Wrap, all of you understand, I think wrap is the cover, upper cover, old knee, I think in Hindi you say that. Okay, so there's the wrap, upper clothes, yes. Continue. Yes, continue. Loisel detained her. Wait, said he, I am going to call a cab. But she would not listen and descended the steps rapidly. When they were in the street, they found no carriage and they began, began to seek for one, hailing the coachman whom they saw at a distance. They walked along towards the river, hopeless and shivering. Finally, they found one of those old carriages that one sees in Paris after nightfall. It took them as far as their door and they went wearily up to their apartment. It was all over for her and on his part, he remembered that he would have to be at the office by 10 o'clock. She removed the wraps from her shoulders before the glass for her for a final view of herself in her glory. Suddenly she uttered a cry. Her necklace was not around her neck. And they returned after the party. They went for a cab, but there was no cab after nightfall. Usually the coaches, the coachman carriages are there. So they hired one, the man dropped them, filled their house and she wanted to go for a final look, final glance before removing the jewelry and the dress. And when she was standing before the mirror, before the glass, she saw that the necklace was lost. The necklace disappeared. The diamond jewelry disappeared. And now she was worried, disappointed, all her happiness had been ruined. And now what do they do after losing 
the necklace